All right, we got another one. Gonna turn on the car and we're gonna get this message. First of all, there's a little uh, service light right there. So it tells you something. Let's start the car. You see this closed uh, pad. Brake pads may be replaced. You can continue driving them, but for a short duration, have the problem, just check by your nearest uh, center. Let's say, let's check it out. Let's go to car status. Let's go to one of these. Uh, required services. And he has our problem right here. So front brake pads. So he has a problem right here. So front brake pads can be serviced. Let's toggle down. Uh, service order, please make an appointment at your service center. So we got 50 miles left. We'll click on that. Service what we do. Let's check it out, see what kind of parts we need. We're gonna check that out. See what kind of pads we, we need. So front pads only, so the front of the car. All right, so the brake fluid for these 2019 to 2022 X7 is located here. So if you look at the driver side, passenger side, you're looking from the car head on, so it's right here next to the intercoolant. Uh, we did that in the other video. Check out that video. I'll put a link in the description or a little card up there. Here's the uh, brake reservoir. It kind of sits here. So there's a twist and unlock. Unlock. There we go. There is. That's brake fluid right there. And I highly recommend using uh, what they recommend here. Uh, dot four let me come around this way get a better view dot four brake fluid and i recommend you would use uh bmw brand only next we're going to need and see what kind of parts we need to get this uh front brake done all right so this is what you would need looks like a star wrench there's two pins there we're gonna get new pins for that one there one up there so we're gonna need pads for that. We need a new rotor. BMW recommends change the rotor, including the pads. I don't know. This car is pretty heavy. Uh, I guess we'll follow instructions for once. All right, tools to get this job done. An impact uh, driver with a 17 millimeter. I got that from Walmart. So the plastic piece is on there just so you're not scratching the rim or marring the rim. It's a 17 millimeter impact. A couple more tools. All time favorite needle nose plier, angled, two flat heads, Phillip head, uh, pair of pliers, socket, and a utility knife. Now, let's get into this. So, you got a 3 8 socket, I mean, it's ratchet with a E16, they call it E verted uh, socket. So, let me see if I can zoom in for you without getting blurry here. So, E16 is what you need, and inside looks like that. Kind of like that. So I got this whole set for like 45 bucks. So here's the E16 that you need, that one right there. So this whole set came through Amazon for 45 bucks. Get it from them. Gloves, flashlight. Here's a great tool here I saw on Amazon. It compresses your pads together so you don't have to go crazy trying to use a C clamp of some sort. So you need some hardware. They recommend changing out. So what I've done in my research is they recommend changing out the rotors, including the pads and the new sensor. That's why it's throwing off the sensor code on your dashboard for your BMW 2020 X7 X Drive 40i. It's what I'm changing out today. So I recommend changing out the rotor, the pads, the sensor, and the hardware, or this the retaining wear, whatever. Anti uh shims i don't know what they call it anyway i got all the, i'm a big fan of bremel bremel has been around if you don't know bremel is an italian company based in italy that makes racing performance uh pads and rotors so who who better than use than bremel you know and they they got great uh, product this is one of those ceramic uh rotors that cools down as you're driving or 
your brake under hard braking. That way it's not heating up as bad. The left side is actually very expensive. Uh, it's like 250 for one. Then you need the driver's side, I mean the passenger side, the right side, which is about 200 even around there, give or take. So the pads came from Amazon. So shout out to Amazon for that. Again, not affiliated with them, but they were able to get these Brembo pads, including the, what our anti-vibration lube it gave me a free sticker. So boom, that has the stick on pads in the back. Uh, two front pads, th those come in pairs, of course. This came from Amazon. This came from Rock Auto, the two rotors. Uh, and these shims came from Rock Auto. So you get all that from Rock Auto. And the uh, brake compressor is from uh, Amazon also. So I would recommend using OEM product for these uh, type of cars. So I got this from BMW, shout out to BMW Shoesbury. I went over there, the guy was like, uh, okay, this is a, what kind of car you got? And he gave it to me for free. Just, those guys are pretty cool. So check them out. You know, we get a promo code with them. Uh, BMW Shoesbury, they're the, they're the people to go to for your automotive needs in Massachusetts area. I mean, they're just courteous, very kind people. They don't try to push you. And they gave me this for free. So shout out to BMW Shoesbury. When I was doing the uh, windshield washer fluid for the same car, they gave me the free bottle. So they gave this to me for free also. Uh, pro tip here, since you stuck around so long. Uh, things to know is the left side and the right side rotors are two different rotors. So don't confuse the two. So the rotor is built with flares going this way. So basically this is the driver's side. The uh, front left passenger. So the flare should be going this way. This is on the driver's side. To make sure you're in the right, you have the right rotor, look down into the rotor. It kind of flares this way. I don't know if you guys can see that on the video. It kind of wants to flare it downward, giving that look of going like this. All right, so. Be aware. So this is the passenger side in front. So the car's that way. The flare should go this way. So like that. You know what I'm saying? So it should, so when the car rotates, it goes this way. It lets air uh, pick it up and just spits it out. Let's continue. Other things you're gonna need is a flashlight, a pair of gloves. A couple more things to add is the anti-seize, a hole puncher. Like six millimeter um, socket, Allen wrench socket, and a hammer. So that's gonna take out the rotor. That's gonna take out the hardware. We have to punch that hardware out with the punchers. Those you can get from Lowe's. They come in three sizes. Those are the sizes. I think they're like 10, 15, 20 dollars around there. A six millimeter um, Allen wrench, some anti C. So next time you do this job, gonna have another problem and a hammer to kind of the persuader. All right, all right, first things first, what you want to do is before you start, before you jack up the car and everything, you want to take the cap off the uh, brake fluid reservoir to so when you compress the calipers, the brakes back in, it pushes the fluid back here, so it has space to push back. So it just it recommends cleaning the top off and then uh, I'm just gonna crack this open. So I'm gonna do that. Again, just slightly crack it. You can see it's kind of wobbly there. Just enough so it's able to bring the fluid back because it's a hydraulic system. You gotta bring it back into this reservoir. All right, so I have the car jacked up on stands. So safety first, I got the floor jack over there. That's for my Tundra truck. So this will hold up the car that floor jack's not rated for this uh, SUV. This SUV is like, power. it's pretty heavy. I had to guess probably like three, four tons. This is a four ton jack. That's a two ton jack. So don't use that to jack up this car. It won't won't be able to take it. But safety first, we put in some jack stands there. Just for safety. And then I put those near the sway arms just in case something happens, you know. And uh, of course, always chalk up your wheels down there. So those wheels are chalked up with some cinder blocks. So safety first. All right, let's get started. So a couple things to note. Here's a six millimeter Allen wrench. That's gonna be taken out and this is gonna come right out. 
I did spray this on PB Blast. Shout out to PB Blast. They got the best product out there. That's being marinated with uh, some PB Blast along with the hub. And what we're going after is the E16 bolt that's in the back of this caliper. So here's the caliper. Shed some light in this matter. So we're not going after these. These hold up the four piston calipers. We're going after this one down here. This is the one that holds up to the uh, the wishbone suspension. That attaches that. That way we can take out the rotor. So this E16 one here, one way down here. The weird thing is, so the car gave me a warning light about getting your brake pad service, but pads looks pretty dang good. So I don't know why it would give me such a error code. Look at the thickness on that pad. It still looks good. I don't know why it's making me go for crazy. And even the rotor looks pretty good. There's no real lip to this thing. Like, why are you making me change the whole thing? BMW, you, you crazy. This should be snug. It shouldn't be that hard to take out. So, kind of rusty. We'll give it a new one anyway. The, the Bremo ones came with new ones, so we use a new one. I want to compress the brakes at the same time. In order to do that, I need to take out these pins first. The pins we talked about earlier. So there's one pin here, you're gonna hit it with the hole puncher, push it back, grab a pair of pliers and just knock it out. Recommend that you put an NDCs at the end. So we're gonna punch this out, squeeze the pads together, I mean the, the calipers together, push the fluid back there, and then we'll take out the sensor. There's a sensor here, I'll show you in, in a second. Let's do that first. So the way this thing sits, it, it sits like this. Um, you can kind of picture it there. So once you pop this locking mechanism here, this black piece right here, that's the actual lock that keeps the pin in. Once you pass that point, this pin should be able to slide out. So what I'm hitting from is this side right here. That's the whole idea behind it. So there's the pins. So it slid out and it looks like the whole piece is out ready. So you can just take a vice grip and just pull it out. We line up so old, new, new ones on the left, uh, old ones on the right. You see, it's kind of rusty, but it matches up perfectly. Shout out to Rock Auto. To get this piece out, these um, brakes have to be closed up such that so you start to see this start to wiggle. Remember having open our cap. A reservoir cap up there, we're able to push this fluid to kind of go back to zero. This should be able to pop right out. Just to pop it in. Put it back would be something like this. So we're gonna make note. This is gonna say left or right here. And it also has the indentation for a sensor. So it looks like you can use it on either side. And same thing here. And you're gonna see the sensor come through here. There's a sensor right there. There's a sensor there. It so kind of sits on the, the brake pad itself there. So you have to disconnect from here. There's one. So the way it looks is here. I'd hook from here. Basically, we're gonna unhook from here, all over here. We take it off the box from here. So we can take it off the box from here. This clip's holding it. And there you go, one, two. 
So we're going after the blue one, not the top one. Yeah, I guess you do need to replace it. From here you can't tell. From here you can, a little bit there. All right, we'll pop the sensor off. We'll use our favorite tool. Anybody comment? What's my favorite tool? Ta-da! See why it's giving me a sensor code reading now. That's why you need new sensors when you replace these. Because it's essentially touching the rotor. See it? Here's the rotor. Here's the pads. It's pretty much down to the near the sensor, kind of sticking up a little bit. So that's probably why we need to switch it. So it's giving me error codes, a bunch of shape down. See, this one has a little, still has a little bumps on it. A little bumpy. No bump. Compress it with some more of this tool. Uh, but let's get a tie. That way, we make sure this doesn't fall and rip out the. Brake line that we did on the Tundra. So if you haven't checked out that video, I went to change my brakes and I broke the uh, brake line at Tundra. So 2007 Tundra, 2009, check that video out. I haven't already, how I replaced the brake line. And this one, we're not gonna do, try to do that. We're gonna use a rope, tie a thing up. That way this caliper is being held up. And if I understand these are aluminum, these should be lighter. The Tundra was a cast iron. That thing was heavy. Ugh, nightmares. Ugh. All right, so we're gonna use the E16 to get the bolt in the back out. You like this kind of time kind of time to help you save money. Anything we we do here, we talk about money. Because we don't, we're gonna get scammed. to come out ready good stuff man so that's under tension this brake line is not good there just to make sure put it less so all the tension is under the rope this should pop right up damn there you go BMW, you did something right. I imagine the uh, M3 calipers are probably um, just as super duper light. All right, we got a problem. So, that was the wrong part. That is a 14.75 inch rotor. This is a 13 inch rotor. It doesn't fit. So I'm gonna send it back to Rock Auto. We'll get the correct one. But at least I'll show you how I did that. Just change out the rotors. You saw it's pretty easy. But at least I'll show you what I mean. So this is 14.75 around there. So this is exactly 13. That's what I mean. Well, you live and learn. Uh, good thing with Rock Auto, they have a pretty good return system. You may have to pay a little extra for restocking and sending out the correct one. But that's what you do. This is not a professional channel by any means. I am learning in my driveway, as you can see. Yeah, right now, driveway. Let's put on some NTCs, we'll throw in the new rotor. We'll go to the other side, we'll call it a day. NTC's first. Big fan of this stuff. Just a little haze, that's all. That way next time you go to take this off, you will have no problems. There we go. 
a little bit in there just for the, the bolt. All right, I'll put it back together. Uh, make sure those pins are lined up. Brand new Bremo brakes there, folks. Give it more stopping power. Like I said, I wasn't able to change the road out because of the incorrect size, but hey, you live and learn. I'll do the same thing on the opposite side, but not going to film that part. So you kind of get the idea. The only difference is this will not, the other side, the passenger side will not have the um, brake sensors. So it won't have that piece right there. You don't need to replace that. Replace that at all. It's only one sided. So we'll hurry up and do the other side and then we'll call it a day. So as you compress the rotors back, I mean the pads back, you'll get some spillage here. That's why I put a little um, paper towel and the cap still kind of open. We'll soak that up and you know make sure you wipe that up nice because from here the brake fluid is very corrosive. But I wanted to show you the pro chip since I was on the other side to get the the four calibers to close. What I did was stuck two fat flatheads in between the grooves of this rotor. It kind of went counter. One going that way and one going this way. Thus pushing against the two pads going out backwards. Get it? So a little pro tip there I wanted to show you. That's how you would do that to get the uh, pads to close up on each other. So I stuck it between this thing here, right there. A little pro tip there. You heard it from here folks, we're on this channel. All right, I'll put it back together. So I took it for a chest drive. Here's the new Bremos, distinct red that Bremo has. So that's in there, Let's see. So, you know, that's it. I mean, I did it myself for 500 bucks with parts. Uh, we're gonna have to return the rotor to Rock Auto, uh, possibly in the future videos, or maybe now I'll just replace the rotor then. Otherwise the rotor on right here looks fine. I don't know why the guy and the uh, other video I watched, she recommends changing the pad in the rotor. You don't really don't need it. But hey, since I ordered from Rock Auto, they can charge me uh, to restock the feed and we'll do that. But uh, yeah, you can get this done. Uh, BMW probably cost you 1500 to have them do this whole thing, you know, parts and labor. But we did it for 500 bucks. So if you like this kind of content, we'll talk about personal finance, cost savings. This is a cost saver. You do this yourself on the 2020 X7 change out the brake pad and the rotor we had able to do that without the extra help so if you haven't already subscribed to the channel i'll see you in the next video all right thank you for sticking around this long so i drove around for a little bit uh, it, i guess it doesn't reset itself so we're gonna have to reset it ourselves and it seems like through my research that all you need to do is just uh, do the same go into the di diagnostic mode how i did the the oil change on this car, same exact thing, reset the thing. So we're gonna hit the button three times, put it into diagnostic mode. So we can hit the start stop button three times. One, two, three. We're gonna hold the BC button down. We put the go diagnostic mode. Still holding it down. Uh, possible. So every time I, I, it gets the screen I want, I'm releasing and holding it back down as quickly as I can. I'm still holding it down until it says reset possible. I'm just holding it down until it says reset yes. And then I let it go and press again. Reset questionable. Yes, we want to reset the brakes. Still holding it down. Reset in progress. I'm let I let go already. So resetting next two hundred pad, I guess two hundred thousand miles. The brake lights are gone. Down there, no more key. So we have successfully reset the brake pad so i figured i'd show you that since you guys have subscribed to this channel subscribe if you haven't already that's how you reset the brake for this 2020 bmw x drive 40i so that's how you do it it's the same concept as when you did the oil change check out that video how i did the oil change on that appreciate you guys so much for watching these videos i'll see you in the next one